This video is available in English and Hindi. Namaskar. Welcome back to your channel Simplify Your Space. The festive preparations are integral part of Diwali and I love it. It brings so much of freshness, joy and newness to our homes. We all love to clean, decorate, shop, travel, cooking delicious meals and meet up with our loved ones. While it is enjoyable, it can also be exhausting due to the multitude of tasks. In today's video, I will share some festival meal planning ideas to help you quickly and effortlessly prepare food for your guests, allowing you to save valuable time. Let's get started. In this scenario, we are assuming that the guests will be coming to our home for lunch or dinner over a period of 2 to 3 days consecutively and we shall plan accordingly. To begin, we should create a menu detailing the dishes we intend to prepare for the first dinner. For the first dinner, our vegetarian menu includes the following items. In snacks, we have mini samosa and cheese corn balls. In main course, we have rajma, shahi paneer, dry alu parval ki sabzi, cucumber raita, lachha paratha and jeera rice. And for dessert, we have mung dal halwa. Now let's move on to the preparations. Our first step will be to boil some potatoes. These potatoes will be used for making our dry vegetables and snacks. Additionally, I had soaked the kidney beans overnight, so I will boil them now. They should be boiled without the addition of salt and spices. I have boiled the potatoes using two different methods. The first batch of potatoes is 80% boiled and these will be used for prepping the vegetable dishes. The second batch of potatoes has been fully boiled making them easy to mash and they will be used in snacks as well as for making potato paratha and kulcha. Additionally, I have separated the kidney beans from the boiling water. By keeping them separate, they will not be sticky and remain firm and they will also have a longer shelf life. We also need to make ginger garlic paste and mint coriander chutney. I have already made both of these and stored them in the freezer, keeping them in a separate container. These are made with just basic preparations and you can find the recipe links for these in the description box. Now let's move on to preparing the gravy for our vegetable dishes. To start, we will make a basic onion and tomato gravy. We need some onions and one and a half times tomatoes. Since I have already prepared ginger garlic paste separately, I am not adding it here, but you can include it if you prefer. Add some salt as per your taste. Cook it thoroughly and set it aside to cool. In the same pan, I will prepare another gravy that will be used for making shahi paneer and kadai paneer. For this gravy, you will need 1 part onion and 4 part tomatoes along with ginger garlic paste, chilies and some cashew nuts. Season with salt according to taste. Saute these ingredients and let them cool down a bit. After cooling, grind both gravies and store them in separate containers. With the basic gravy, you can prepare dishes like rajma, chana, aloo matar, matar paneer and many other gravy based vegetables. The shahi gravy can be used to quickly prepare a variety of paneer dishes, kofta, vegetable korma and more. These prep gravies will provide you great convenience during the festivals, allowing you to prepare your meals quickly and without stress. They will easily last for 5 to 6 days in the fridge and if you prefer, you can store them in the freezer for convenient use for 3 to 4 months. 
Additionally, we should chop one or two onions and tomatoes and store them in a container. This will be very useful if you need to prepare something quickly during the festivities. Also have cut paneer and storing them in a container to make it easier to prepare our vegetable dishes. I have cut the paneer into two different shapes for variety. Additionally, if you can wash and separate coriander leaves in advance, it can save a lot of time when preparing food. Now let's move on to preparing the snacks. To do this, heat a little oil in a pan and add cumin and a pinch of fennel seeds for added flavor. Next, add chopped onions and saute them, followed by ginger garlic paste. Add a blend of spices including red chilli powder, coriander powder, cumin powder, dry mango powder, a touch of garam masala, asafoetida and salt to taste. Now add the peas and cover the mixture allowing it to cool for some time. Finish by adding chopped coriander leaves and your samosa masala is ready. Allowing it to cool and then transfer it to a container storing it in the fridge. For the second snack, cheese corn balls, we will make them instantly when guests are about to arrive and we will see that in later part of this video. Now let's prepare the sweet. For dessert, I am making moong dal halwa which can be easily stored in the fridge for 4 to 5 days. Simply heat it and serve it when guests arrive. To make it, I soak 1 cup of moong dal for 4 to 5 hours in advance until it swelled. After draining the water, I will grind it. In a separate pan, heat a cup of ghee. On another burner, prepare a syrup by adding 1 cup of sugar, 1 cup of water and some cardamom for flavor. Once the ghee is hot, add a tablespoon of rava and a tablespoon of besan and roast them until they turn golden brown. Now add the ground dal mixture to the pan and stir it continuously on low heat until it becomes light brown in color. Next add sugar syrup to this mixture and continue stirring until it thickens. Keep stirring until it no longer sticks to the bottom of the pan. When all the water evaporates and a little ghee starts to emerge, it indicates that the halwa is ready. Add some chopped cashews and almonds to enhance the flavor. Your delicious moong dal halwa is now ready. Allow it to cool for a while and then transfer it to a container. There are some misconceptions about meal preparation. It is important to clarify that meal prepping does not equate to serving stale meals. All the food we will be serving is prepared fresh. We have simply taken some steps in advance to make the process smoother. This practice is not new. It's been followed for generations. Tasks like making ginger garlic paste, preparing chutney, cutting vegetables and storing them, kneading dough, making and storing sweets have been done for a long time, even by my mother. Many preparations are completed the day before, making the cooking process much more efficient and convenient on the following day. With all our preparations completed, we just need to store everything in containers and place them in the fridge. The preparations we made yesterday will be put to good use today as we prepare dinner for our wonderful guest. To begin, I have taken out ginger garlic paste, mint chutney, sweet corn, mozzarella cheese and breadcrumbs from the freezer as needed, allowing them to come to room temperature while we prepare the food. It's worth noting that everyone has their unique way of making dishes. So while you can follow the recipes I use, feel free to modify them to suit your preferences and convenience. Let's start by preparing the vegetable dishes. I've gathered all the necessary ingredients for these. If you have a cooktop with 3 to 4 burners, you can efficiently cook all 3 vegetables simultaneously. However, since I need to demonstrate each dish, I will prepare them one by one. First, let's make rajma. In a pan, heat some oil and add a bay leaf and cumin seeds. Then add ginger garlic paste and mix well. 
Make a paste with few spices which includes coriander powder, turmeric, cumin powder, red chilli powder and little water. Pour this mix into the pan and stir. This will prevent spices from burning. Fry this mixture briefly and add the pre-prepared gravy. If the gravy is already cooked, it won't take much time to prepare the rajma. Once the spices and gravy are well combined, add boiled rajma water or hot water. After it comes to a boil, add the rajma. I have not added salt because there was already salt in the gravy. Now I have placed it on low flame to cook. Now let's make shahi paneer. Start by melting butter in a pan and adding a pinch of cumin. In a bowl, prepare a mixture of water, shahi paneer masala, coriander powder and a bit of Kashmiri red chilli powder for the nice colour. Pour this thick batter into the pan, fry it briefly and add a secret ingredient, one spoon of tomato ketchup which adds a wonderful flavour to shahi paneer. Now add the gravy, remembering that there is already salt in it. Add a little more salt only if needed. Mix well and adjust the water as required. Once it boils, add cut paneer. Since it's shahi paneer, we will finish it with cream. Top it with a sprinkle of roasted kasuri methi. Shahi paneer is ready. Our rajma is also done. Add some ghee for rich flavour, a touch of garam masala and garnish it with fresh coriander leaves. Let's move on to preparing the third one, dry aloo purval. I already have boiled potatoes and the purval is chopped and ready. Heat oil in a pan, shallow fry the purval and potatoes and set them aside. Now add cumin to the same oil and put chopped onions. Now add a bit of ginger garlic paste and saute it. After thoroughly mixing these, add some onion tomato gravy to enhance the flavour of this vegetable. Next, add a blend of spices including coriander powder, turmeric, cumin powder, red chilli powder and a touch of garam masala. Saute for a bit then add the fried purval and potatoes. Mix well and season with salt according to taste. Cover and let it cook for a while. While the aloo purval vegetable is cooking, I will prepare some jeera rice. Additionally, I am making cucumber raita. I had set the curd the night before. In this, I am adding salt, a pinch of black pepper, roasted cumin and ground mint to it which adds a delightful flavour. Since the dough was already kneaded, we can quickly prepare the parathas. It is amazing that the entire main course is ready and all this within just one hour. Now let's prepare the snacks. I am going to make pea samosa for which I will start by kneading the dough. Take one cup of refined flour and add some ajwain, mangrela, salt and a bit of ghee. Make a soft dough and then cover it and let it rest for a while.
In the meanwhile, let's prepare the potato corn balls. Take some boiled potatoes, some sweet corn, mozzarella cheese, chopped capsicum, red chili flakes, black pepper and salt. Add 2 tablespoons of corn flour to the mixture and thoroughly combine all the ingredients. Now make a slurry by mixing refined flour and water. Shape the mixture into round balls and dip them into the slurry followed by rolling them in bread crumbs. Continue making all the balls in this manner and place them in a container. We will also fill the samosas in a similar way and set them aside. I have already prepared the piece filling in advance for convenience. I am making mini samosas and have placed them in the container as well. Now I will refrigerate them for a while. When the guests arrive, I will fry them to serve them hot. I have just finished getting ready and the guests have arrived. Now it's time to quickly fry the snacks. Within 10 minutes, the snacks are ready to be served. While some of you may be of opinion that everything has to be cooked fresh then and there only, however, for me, meal prepping and planning works well. It helps me to avoid getting overworked at the last moment and secondly significantly curbs my temptation to order outside food which I do sometimes. It is true that fresh from garden will have best nutrition value and factory packaged food will have worst. And that is where meal prepping sits in between where the mix of nutrition and peace of mind is optimized. So this was the menu for day one. Once the preparations are completed, you can easily prepare food for 4-5 to five days allowing you to enjoy the festivals with your friends and family rather than being stuck in the kitchen. Festivals are the time for celebrations and smart meal planning can help you make the most of them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like and share it. Subscribe to our channel for more such videos. Happy festivities to all of you. Bye-bye.